Hey everyone, it's the Maze Man with another Roblox game feature tutorial. This time is how to make a communication GUI. This is seen in most of my games. For example, in Roblox Titanic, there's tons of these, but this specific one is when you're in the water and you have the blue steel taco and you've eaten it. Instead of the hypothermia GUI showing up on the screen, it says blue steel taco shell, which means you're immune to hypothermia, so you don't lose any health after you eat the blue steel taco shell. This is in Industrial Gladiators. The other team just won. Red won, and I was on blue team. So it says, Red wins. All of blue team's platforms are melted. And it stays there for six seconds unless you click it. Then it disappears. So how do you make that? This tutorial will go over that. In this tutorial, I go over what a communication or a what you did GUI is. Why you should use both stationary and moving what you did GUIs. With stationary GUIs, do you click it? to remove, or do you let it remove by itself, or do you incorporate both into it? Timing moving GUIs. How do you time those GUIs so that they are on the screen long enough so that the player can read them if they want, or to ignore them if they have already, if they already know what it says? For example, plus one dirt, plus one dirt. Those GUIs go by pretty fast. Writing to your players. You, you want to make what you're trying to say as concise as possible because People don't want to read a lot when they're playing the game. They want to play the game. The difference of GUIs copied from lighting or from player GUI. When you copy a GUI from lighting and paste it into the player GUI, it does this weird thing where the position isn't changed right away, so it seems to flash on one part of the screen, and then it changes positions and goes up and then goes down if it's the moving GUI. So if you have a already cloned GUI in player GUI and you just clone another one, then it won't do that flashing thing. Let's get started. I will show you the actual code for how the communications GUI works in Roblox Titanic. The GUIs are in lighting. I'm going to make this more simple by deleting everything else in lighting. This is the what you did GUI. It's the stationary one. And this is the what you did to GUI, the moving one. If I move this to start a GUI, you see it's just a, a blue GUI with no text. That's because you, the editor, get to edit the text every time you want to make a communication GUI. And this is also just neon green text. You can change the size, the color, the position. All of this can be customized in each individual case. For example, in Roblox Titanic, I have a different color for when you're underwater drowning than if you're above water getting risk points. That's all changeable in each specific case where you want the script to clone into player GUI. Let's take a look at the click remove script. In the stationary GUI, it's clicking this GUI, which is the only GUI that pops up when, when this is cloned into player GUI. When clicked, it makes the screen GUI named screen GUI, and it puts it in game.workspace and in game.workspace, there's a script that automatically removes GUIs right here. So it checks if a thing is added, and then if it's a screen GUI, then it destroys it. So what if you want to make it so that it just disappears after a certain amount of time? Well, here's that script, visible remove. It's a while loop, but it only runs when it's in the player GUI. It doesn't run in lighting. So in this one, it waits the timer value, and then it makes the screen GUI name screen GUI and puts it into game.workspace. Then it gets removed just like the click remove script does. Now let's head on over to the what you did to GUI. This is the moving one. This is a bit more complicated. What it does is it makes a time zero, and then it uses a repeat loop, adds time, and then it adds position, so it, the position goes upwards. So once the time is over a certain amount, it makes the time zero again, and then it goes to another repeat loop. And this time, it makes, it makes the font smaller, and it also makes the position negative each repeat. So that means that the GUI goes downwards, and it also makes the text transparency more, so that as it goes downwards, it fades away. And then it uses the same method of removing. It puts it in game.workspace and names it screen GUI, so it removes. I've made several scripts of this because timing isn't always the same for every GUI. I want some GUIs to pop up longer so people can read them, or, or I want some GUIs to be gone really quickly. 
So let's put this into action. This is part of an on-spawn script for Roblox Titanic. If Tabuscus plays, he gets a safety torch. So here's some regeneration things. I can go over this in detail in another tutorial. But f here's the main thing we're looking at, right here. He got a safety torch. Show him a GUI. So what happens is, it backs up the GUI, that GUI 2, because I want it to be an up and down GUI. So when he sees it, it will say, you got a safety torch. What happens is it disables the do one script, which is the default do script. The do script is shown earlier. It's the, the repeat loops and how fast the GUI moves up and down. And it enables the do four script. So going back to do four, this is what it does compared to do one. It makes it show up a lot longer. And one more thing, it changes the color to yellow, you know, because the torch kind of yellow. Here's an example of using the what you did GUI, the stationary one. This is part of a script in Roblox Titanic where you hit a button where you're allowed to say a roleplay message. And if you hit it when it's not time to say that roleplay message, it will say, this is a place to say a roleplay message. Come back at the right time to say it. This is probably my most used stationary GUI because the buttons are all over the place in Roblox Titanic and it's probably the most commonly used stationary GUI that I have. So it checks if a what you did GUI is already in player GUI. If there already is one, it won't make another. I hope this helped, and I hope you can make cool things with this. I know I have made some pretty cool things with this, and it really helps if you can communicate with your players. Because sometimes when you're playing a game and you don't know what's happening, or you, you don't know if you did something right, a GUI can solve that especially a communication GUI. Thanks for watching.